All right. So imagine that this is you. You are an infinite, you are infinite awareness. Having a point of attention experienced. So if you are infinite awareness, infinite intelligence, because that is what you are connected to, infinite intelligence, then you as this dot can shift your focus in any direction and into any experience you desire. Does that make sense? So you are having a point of attention experience based on what you consciously and subconsciously have given attention, uh, attention to. So if you are loosey-goosey with your mind and you allow your mind to run away with you uh, and from you, and you're giving attention to all the things you do not want, anxiety and stress and fretting and frustration and resentment and maybe feeling you know, flat and disconnected, all these sorts of things, then that is what you are going to manifest outside of you. That is what you are going to draw to you as an experience, okay? A point of attention experience. And so everything that you are leaning into by way of your emotions moves back and uh, filters back to you as an experience. So you become, that's a very bad portal, okay? You become like a wormhole, okay? And so you pass through this eye of the wormhole. And so you are going from one experience to another experience. And so the reason that you are moving through these experiences is because you are giving attention to the emotions and the imagery, okay? Does that make sense? So let's move on a little bit. And I know I'm dropping some, you know, uh, different type of stuff. And it's uh, to expand your mind, expand your heart, and to get you feeling awesome about those that are awaiting you right now. So let's go to this right now. So let's say this is you. You're having a point of attention experience. You are infinite intelligence, infinite awareness. Now, you want to expand yourself. You want to expand your experiences. So you must move from the known, which is where we were before, the known, we must move out into the unknown. And this is where Maha's question, excellent question, love it, starts to uh, kick in because as we move out and further away from the known, we become, we inter interact with greater unknowns and we move through and experience greater levels of knowns. So it sounds a bit, bit weird, right? So of course, that which was first unknown now has become known. So what was first unknown to you through going through the process, expanding your field, looks like a spider web, doesn't it? Very much like that. So as we expand our field, expand our intention, expand our attention and our desire to experience new, then as we come into contact with new, what was unknown now becomes known. So now we can go, okay, I've got all of these knowns as new evidences, new reference points. Okay. Does that make sense? But what happens if we have, have an idea and Maha's idea, Maha's desire, let's just say love right there. So I've experienced love, but I haven't experienced it in the manufactured outcome or desired outcome that I see in my mind and see in my imagination and see and feel in my heart. And whether that is marriage, 
whether that is, you know, uh, childbirth, you know, whether, whatever it is, there's heaps of like, whatever it may be there. If there is something you haven't experienced before, then you, of course, are using your imagination and what you have learned about love through feelings. So you can use your imagination and be super specific. And I've heard this one before. Let's say it's about love. I want to attract the perfect mate. You go, oh my gosh, really? What is the perfect mate? Have you broken that down? Have you given specifics to your perfect mate? Because you might say, well, the perfect mate must look like this, sound like this, live like this, earn like this, um, whatever it may be. And yet you attract someone very similar to that, if not uh, exactly the same. And then you realize, hmm, but they're not available because they're married or they haven't gotten over their ex or they're unav emotionally unavailable because they're going through a healing process, whatever it may be. You know, So specifics is really important. Now, this is going to help you deal, uh, dial in to what love means for you because you're having a universal experience. It's you, baby. It's all you. Okay, so if you've heard my podcast, you'll hear me say that over and over again. It's all you. So what you seek to experience in this example of love, even though you may not have experienced marriage or childbirth or, you know, being deeply in love and having a, a mutually beneficial, mutual exchange uh, relationship, whatever it may be, then you can use your imagination and the feelings that arise inside of your imagination from previous reference points, okay? So obviously, if you want to fall in love, then maybe a previous reference point of, you know, I remember my parents splitting up and it was a terrible divorce and it was all these sorts of things and this is how I felt. That's not going to feel that great, okay? So you want to match the feelings you want to match the feelings with the desire, okay? So if you don't want to have the broken relationship and to feel the same feelings that you thought and experienced and uh, passed through or journeyed through uh, in the example of your parents splitting up, then don't go introducing those feelings to this love potion or this love equation, okay? Does that make sense? So we bring in relevant uh, references, energy through feelings and emotions, okay? We bring those in that match the desire. So how do you know, let's get to the point. You need some backstory here. How do you know what marriage feels like if you've never been married before? Well, what all the romance films, the, uh, the lovey-dovey films like, how do they know what it feels like? They use their imagination to create a scene and therefore build out scenes from scenes to create movies and motion pictures. Gosh, it sounds like I'm from the uh, early 1900s there, motion picture. But the whole thing around the movie is to immerse yourself in the experience. Now, here is where it comes full throttle. You may look and say, okay, here is love. Here is the light side of my equation and here is the shadow. No one really talks about this. So the light side of the equation are all the feelings of feeling connected and feeling inspired and feeling all those juicy, warm, glowing feelings of, of love and desire and passion and Blah, 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 all the things, okay? So you can list those all here. You know, doing things together, being unified, open com uh, communication, you know, understanding, compassion, da, 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 all these things here. Now, what's the shadow? If I can write out and, and express what are the, the shadows that I, may exist within me about love? Maybe it's to do with what I was referring to before. Maybe it's about an ex. 
Maybe it's about your parents. Maybe it's about society. Maybe it's about a religious type of indoctrination. You know what I mean? So what are the shadow sides that may be lurking there inside your desire that not expressed, not shared, not revealed, not brought into the light may find you in the future? So may find you, and it's not to um, make you scared or look over your shoulder. It's so that you can find true experiences, true love, true wealth, true abundance, true health, true happiness. Does that make sense? So I'm going to a lot more detail here because when you start to think about, well, love only, and I'm using the same example again, um, is only, oh, let me just go back here. Love only feels good. Okay, whether that's uh, proper English or not, I have no idea. The school for the, uh, the gifted. Um, but love only feels good. Well, what happens about the other side where love doesn't always feel good? So when we can address this side, we can say, well, yes, I want a relationship that has as open communication, understanding, compassion, respect, integrity, honesty, loyalty, you know, um, uh, able to go to the depth, the, the depths of um, unconditionality. Da, 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 da. You can go all the way through there so that when you're unpacking your true love formula or your true wealth formula or your true happiness formula, you are in effect addressing the shadow does that make sense so you're addressing the shadow by making it a complete desire fulfilled okay so it's a complete desire rather than it being a fantasy because a fantasy is this that love only feels good well sometimes love sucks you know what I mean? Like it feels heavy. It feels hard. Wealth only feels good. There's just a lot of responsibility with wealth. How to keep it. It's easier to make it, but how do you keep it? That's the harder part. What about happiness? Uh, happiness only feels good. Well, happiness is, is a learning curve. You, can, you know what I mean? It goes on and on and on. All right. So here's, here's the example that I want to give you right now. That fantasy is the illusion. The illusion also is you cannot have what you want or what you desire. Okay, so that's a, a, a bigger question and a bigger answer to, to go into a topic there. But I want to make it very clear um, that when we go from the get, when we start from the beginning, again, let me just go back here. Got no idea what I was even talking about. Here we go, emotions and imagery. You are infinite intelligence having a point of attention experience. Wherever you rest your attention and give your energy is what you ultimately will experience. So if you have no idea what the feeling, what, what the result feels like because you've never felt You've never experienced marriage or childbirth or mother, a parenthood, whatever it may be. Then another way is you ask people. Okay. But your soul actually knows. Your soul knows. And your soul knows how to feel and how to use your imagination. It knows. So if you can daydream about love and you can do it in a balanced, refined way, so we want a balanced, refined way, then what you bring to you will be the manifestations of your dreams rather than the manifestations of your fantasies. Because fantasies 
are the illusion that keeps you trapped. Okay, keeps you trapped in a one sided experience. All right. So, wrapping all of that up, let me just make this really clear. This is you. Aren't you beautiful? Look at that shiny, shiny dot on a page. You have infinite capabilities because your imagination is infinite. So whatever you want to experience, you create based on the use of your imagination and using the power of your emotions to match that which you want with that which you already are. I'll leave it at that.